sun-drenched beaches, a modern walkable city, and year-round warm weather. These are just some of the amazing things you might be looking forward to when you're dreaming about moving to the Tampa Bay area. But what if your vision of paradise hides some scary reality you didn't expect? Imagine the shock of finally moving to Florida only to discover a side of Tampa that turns your dream into a sticky, inconvenient nightmare. In today's video, I'll share that side of Florida. The side that no one wants to talk about, the unadulterated UGLY. We're gonna talk about the things that most people in my profession will not share with you. So before you pack up and move south, let's look at the top reasons people regret moving to Tampa, Florida. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. I'm also a licensed real estate agent where I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Now, I want to invite you to the comment section of this video. You're gonna find a lot of useful information in there because what happens here is the locals will contribute to the conversation, both the good, bad, and the ugly. So that's a great place to go ask questions and find things out. And it really helps other people who are considering relocating the area or just want more information. So please feel free to make a connection down there and also ask any questions that are on your mind. I answer all the legitimate questions down there personally. I don't have an assistant handling those conversations for me. So I just want you to be aware of that. Also if you want to go deeper, please feel free to reach out. All my contact information is down below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you. But let's get into this video. Now, with all the wonderful things that the state of Florida has to offer and the greater Tampa Bay area, I'm just going to keep it real. I'm going to share with you the things that people do not love about living here, myself included, and I'm going to try to give the most objective view I can. I'm obviously biased. I live here. I'm not going to lie, right? And that is the most transparent thing I can share with you, but I'm going to give you the real. This is stuff that most people don't want to talk about, and we're going to talk about it today. I'm going to share some statistics with you. You know, let's start with traffic because that's a great place to start because man has it change just in the short time that I've lived here. You know, even three years ago, Tampa didn't even rank in the top 25 of worst congestions in the metropolitan areas, right? So if you took all the giant metros across the United States, Tampa wasn't even in the top 25. In 2023, we moved all the way up to number 10. And that's not a ranking that you want to be climbing the charts in, but it's the reality of having so many people move to the area. You know, we've been one of the hottest relocation destinations for four straight years the state of Florida is still the number one in terms of relocation destinations in the entire country. So we're feeling that pain. You know, when it comes to traffic here in the greater Tampa Bay area, if you want to live over by the beaches and you have to drive downtown for work, that's going to put some, some pain in your life. You know, it's gonna take at least 45 minutes to an hour to get downtown on a regular basis. You gotta cross over one of three bridges to make that happen. Those are obviously choke points and get, can get really congested. When you look at the I-275, I-4 interchange, if you're heading east over to Orlando or to the east side of the city, um, they call that area right there Malfunction Junction. Literally, that's the nickname. And, and it's painful, y'all. Some of these areas go from four lanes or six lanes down to four or three. and you know, if you've driven anywhere in the country that has, you know, over 3 million people in it, you're going to naturally find some of these sticking points and those areas are it. Even on Saturday when we drive downtown, there's always a healthy amount of congestion. Now, here's what I will say. In my experience, and I'm in real estate, I, I have a lot of dashboard time, right? And windshield time, if you will. Um, in my experience, traffic flows really well, even though it does slow down. So do keep that in mind. But there are going to be times when accidents occur and there's just challenges that you're not going to love. Now, a lot of people who have moved here over the last four years have the blessing of working remote. So this isn't a real pain point for them, but if you have to commute to work, especially from the outer suburbs to downtown Tampa, this is going to be a pain point for you. And this is one of the things that does frustrate our residents. The second most common regret I see when it comes to living here in Tampa, Florida is not being prepared for the high humidity in the summer. And let me just tell you, it is intense to say the least. That July, August, September season there, it's our rainy season. Um, it rains almost daily, but the humidity is right around 100% almost every single day. As a matter of fact, I do believe that's the average. That is intense and it is warm, it is sticky. Um, I, I had somebody once explain this to me when I told them I was moving to the area. I was over in Fort Lauderdale in, in, in January. Of course, it's beautiful in Florida in January, right? And the guy looks at me, he's like, have you ever lived through a Gulf Coast summer before? And I was like, no, why? 
He goes, it's like waking up to a Labrador retriever breathing three inches from your face. <laughs> And I remember him saying that, and I'm like, you know, I had the 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 starry eye syndrome, and I was like, yeah, you're crazy. I love Florida. This is going to be awesome. And man, was he right. That first summer, I really did get a wake up call. Now, here's what I'll say. You know, me and my family, we relocated from the Metro Detroit area. We had over six months of gray, dreary, terrible weather, cold freezing, like we can give you all the reasons why. And I'm willing to sweat through two pairs of clothes and take an extra shower every single day of my life to never have to deal with that again. But for some people, that is not their thing. And if you cannot handle the heat, then living here full time through the summer, that may not be for you. There's a reason that there are a lot of people who own second homes here who return to the north during the summer because those months up north tend to be very beautiful. So that is something uh, that you need to take in consideration because that oppressive heat and humidity is what it really boils down to, may not be for you. Our average temperatures in July, August, and September are over 90 degrees. They're usually between 90 and 94. Rarely ever does it get over 95 degrees. That's a pretty darn hot day. Um, and you can check this out. All the, you know, you just go to the weather channel and you can do uh, history on you know the areas you're looking for so that is something to take into consideration if you can't handle the muggy warm weather then the Gulf Coast is not going to be for you the next regret I see quite often is not being prepared for hurricane season. Now, we have been extremely blessed here in the greater Tampa Bay area. 1921 was the last time that the greater Tampa Bay area had a direct hurricane hit from a category three hurricane or stronger. That is a long time, over 100 years, and Lord willing, we'll go another 100 without that happening. But it hasn't come without its run-ins. I mean, just in the short time we've been here, this five and a half years, we're going to our sixth summer here, um, we've already had two um, pretty close run-ins with, with significant hurricanes. And, um, you know, a few years ago, I've shared this story on a live stream I did with you guys in the past that uh, when Hurricane Ian was coming, that, was, that thing was projected to make landfall in Tampa. And fortunately, it did not. It, you know, it, it made a right turn. And unfortunately, it landed in Cape Coral and Fort Myers and just absolutely decimated that beach and that community. And it's still recovering to this day. So that is something to be mindful of. You know, uh, last year, Hurricane Adalia came through and flooded a little bit of South Tampa and St. Pete. Um, and that's part of living here. If you're going to live anywhere on the coast of Florida, whether it's Miami or Jacksonville or um, Naples, you know, obviously key wet the entire coast of the panhandle you've got to be diligent about hurricanes you know that's going to include things like boarding up your home or having hurricane shutters in place having an evacuation plan and some people just aren't comfortable with living with that type of fear and this is something that does scare people and they pack up and they leave even though they know it's possible until you're confronted with it it's very hard to know how you're going to respond so just keep that in mind you know there are insurance maps that kind of show you where things have hit in the past like I shared with you part of our decision of moving to the greater Tampa Bay area was because of the fact there hadn't been a hurricane in a hundred years and um while I'm not trying to play God, there is something to be said for, well, why is that happening? And, and why hasn't it happened? And again, it could happen this year, guys. And I realize that. And as a family, we've made a decision. You know, if it's going to be um, strong, a strong cat three or above, then we're packing up and we're leaving. We'll go to Orlando or we'll, we'll leave the state. One of the benefits of that type of weather is you do get some advance notice, you know, at least 24 hours. It's not like the tornadoes in the Midwest where we were from, where they could just pop up in an instant tear things apart. So, you know, the thing about living in the U.S. is there are a lot of different challenges each climate faces. And, you know, Florida definitely is not a stranger to hurricanes. We have hot weather, you know, it the Gulf of Mexico gets warm, the Atlantic Ocean gets warm, and it definitely is a challenge. So if hurricanes scare you to the point where you don't think you can handle it, then listen, Florida life period is probably not for you. If you're getting value out of today's video, please feel free to hit that like button and also hit the subscribe button and be somebody's hero. If you know a friend or a family member who's considering moving to Florida. Now, another reason you might regret moving to the area is sinkholes. Now, I'm gonna be transparent here. Um, I personally don't know a single person or have any of our clients have ever experienced a sinkhole. However, they are here. 
And when it comes to, you know, the, the geological situation we have here in Florida, you know, we, the city of Tampa and the greater Tampa Bay area, and as a matter of fact, a, a majority of Northern Florida is built on a bed of limestone. And um, limestone is porous rock. And if you think about how the state works, there are um, springs and aquifers that run underneath the ground. That's where we get all our groundwater from, right? Um, and as that flows, it, it erodes that limestone. And as we pull water from those natural springs in the reservoirs, it's pulling water out and this limestone can collapse. And that is where these sinkholes come from. Now, it's a very scary thing when you think about it, but in reality, just like hurricanes for us we haven't we haven't seen it now it does happen i live in pinellas county florida which is just to the west of downtown tampa across the bay in the clearwater st pete area i don't know anyone that that you know we go to a church where there's lots of people that i talk to a lot of people i'm in real estate i'm looking for things like this and i just have not seen it now sinkholes can be very small nominal or they can be very large i mean there was a news article about a 60 foot sinkhole opening up which is crazy but one of the things I wanna arm you with is a tool so you can check this out on your own. This is a great map. It shows you where sinkholes have been reported. And I think one of the things you'll notice right away is the further you travel south, you know, when you start to move south of Tampa Bay there into Manatee and Sarasota County, all of a sudden sinkholes really start to not be nearly as prevalent. But as you head north, you know, Wesley Chapel and, and even further north of that, look at Orlando, the amount of sinkholes you can see there. It's just phenomenal when you, when you take a step back and you go, okay, I haven't seen this, but it's prevalent. It's there. So, you know, I get asked this question often. Again, I've never experienced it. I don't know anybody that has, and none of our clients have either, but this is part of living in Florida. It is possible. Is it probable? Probably not. So another regret that people run into is the fact that there is limited public transportation here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Now, we do have some pockets that are really, really good. So I do want to call that out. You've got downtown Tampa, which has the streetcar. There are, are bikes you can rent, scooters you can rent. It's super walkable. So that is another part of why it's awesome. Um, you have the availability of Uber and Lyft. Those get you there also. So lots of great things there. Same thing in St. Pete. You've got the Sun Runner. There's a bus system uh, that, that will take you all up Pinellas County, Clearwater Beach, all over the place. So those things are wonderful. But if you're working in in other areas or you live in other areas like the northern or western suburbs or even the eastern suburbs you're not getting from a bus to downtown to go to work in a meaningful way it is going to take forever um, it's very difficult and it's very limited so that is something to keep in mind when you're relocating to the area because if public transportation is super important to you i would really focus on you know tampa st pete uh, specifically those are the two areas with the best public transportation they've got abundance right again multiple options from busing, streetcars, you know, rentals, all kinds of things. So that is something that you can look forward to. But if you're hoping to live in, in the suburbs and take a bus to work every day, that's just not a reality quite yet. The Bright Line, which is a high speed train that started in Miami and is working its way up, it is now all the way in Orlando, will be coming sometime in the future, allegedly. But until that happens, we still have very limited availability on public transportation. And before we keep rolling on this list here, I want to invite you to the comment section. This is a great place to get some perspective. Um, you will have locals who will comment on this channel. They'll give you some insights, good, bad, and the ugly. And that's a fair place to go start doing some research. I just caution you. <laughs> some people just like to complain. Other people are really trying to be helpful. So I encourage you to hop down there and check that out. Also, if you have any other questions and you just want to know more about the area, all of my contact information is down there below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that is most convenient for you. The sixth regret on the list here is the overcrowded tourist areas. This is the one that makes locals crazy. And it's fascinating to me, to, to be quite honest, because people that have lived here for 20 years all of a sudden forget that they came here at one point and as a visitor and they discovered the area and they fell in love with it and they decided to move to the area. And then all of a sudden, when other visitors come, they have amnesia all of a sudden and they forget that they went through the whole same process. They fell in love with the area. They love being here. Our white sandy beaches, our gorgeous sunshine, our incredible weather, especially all winter long. And all of a sudden they're mad that other people are experiencing that too. So this is something that just blows my mind and I'm sharing it with you guys because it it is a point of frustration for locals. Now, there's a few other things you need to take into account here too. 
Tampa had approximately 26.7 million visitors to the area last year. And if you live here, that is definitely going to be tough. Listen, I drive the roads, I know what it's like. From right after the holidays up until Mother's Day, the roads are busy. They are full of people who don't live here on a regular basis. You'll see license plates from Pennsylvania and Michigan and Illinois, you know, in California and New Jersey and everywhere, right? Everybody from everywhere descends on Florida because our winters are absolutely incredible and I can't blame them. However, it does lead to frustrations. The grocery stores are busy. The roads are busy. It takes longer to get places. And again, when you go back to traffic and now that we're number 10 in congestion just from the amount of people that live here, this is where that frustration starts to pile up. And if you drive to work, like we talked about before, this definitely is going to add a little bit more pressure on your lifestyle. So just keep that in mind because if you don't like sharing the Gulf beaches, you're going to need to find a deserted island somewhere. I don't I don't know where those exist anymore, but they don't exist in Florida. So if you're thinking that you're gonna come down here and have a beach all to yourself during the peak of season, and, and that is what it's referred to, you know, during those winter months of season, right? And um, we have a lot of seasonality here in Florida and the snowbirds arrive. That's everybody from up north who comes south for the winter. That's just not a reality. So if you don't like sharing your beautiful environment and your home with other people, Florida in general is not going to be for you. Now, the next regret is the one that I've actually been the most surprised by, uh, and it is property taxes. And what I mean by that is not that I've been shocked at what our property taxes cost, because I've shared this before on this channel. Um, if I own the same home that I own here in Florida, in Michigan, where I moved from, my taxes would cost probably five or six thousand dollars more a year than they do right now. That is a lot of money. Um, our taxes here in the state of Florida are actually extremely low. Most people don't know that, but when it comes to property taxes, our property values are very high. Um, now, we still rank really well. From the national average, the greater Tampa Bay area is actually just above the national average in terms of housing prices. Awesome. Unfortunately, the average home sale, and there's a difference between the median and the average, the average home sale in the Tampa Bay area is right around $550,000. And even though our taxes are low, and it's going to be different everywhere you live, anywhere from roughly, and this is an approximation, but this will get you really close, anywhere from roughly 1.35% to 1.6% of the purchase price of the property is what you can expect to pay on your property taxes on an annual basis. We have a homestead exemption that will help you lower that but people i don't think are prepared for that and it blows my mind because listen owning a home in the united states you've got to pay those taxes and i don't care where you live and people move from areas like new jersey illinois where they're paying huge percentages four or five percent on their property taxes and they are excited to move down here because they are getting a huge break on those uh, property taxes. But I do understand other people move from other areas. Maybe they're selling a home that they bought for $180,000 and they've had really, really low tax rates. And all of a sudden they come here, they buy a four to $600,000 house or even more, and they get an education on what it costs to own property. And that can be painful for people. That, so I just want you to be aware of that, you know? And people who moved here 20 years ago, um, who bought homes very, very, very inexpensive at that point. Florida used to be the land of milk and honey for no money. It is not like that anymore. Over 20 million residents, you know, uh, the cost of living here has gone up dramatically across the United States. We're attracting more high income earners. Um, they are, they're buying more real estate. Property values are continuing to go up. If you're on a fixed income, it is gonna be very difficult to manage that no, almost anywhere in the country. But again, we're ranked number four in the entire country in terms of of lowest tax burden as a state. Number four, and people still complain about our property taxes. So again, this one is the most surprising to me because our taxes are wonderful. Again, moving from a state that taxed the heck out of us uh, to a state here where I have no personal income tax from a state perspective, right? We still have to pay the, the United States government per, uh, personal income tax, but there's no state Florida income tax, which is awesome. There's no estate tax, meaning that when you go off to the pearly gates, the state of Florida is not asking for cash out of your, your wealth and your, your assets. That is amazing. And again, my property taxes, we're not paying 1.6%. We pay right around 1.4%. 4 or 5 um, on our property. That is a steal compared to where I moved from. But again, this is about you. You have to manage that decision accordingly.
The next regret on our list is the public education system. Now, for years, people have been screaming that Florida has the worst public education in the country. And come to find out, that's nowhere near true. That part is awesome. I love the fact that people have been really, really wrong on that. Now, that's arguable. People can argue it from sunup to sundown, and that is okay. Here's what I will say. It's not known for being incredible, and that is a very fair statement. <laughs> but there's some pretty cool news. Florida is really starting to turn that ship, so to speak. In just the last few weeks, um, US News ranked Florida as the number one state for education in the entire country, and it blew people away. I saw social media posts where people are like, wow, we had no idea, that can't be true. Everything in between, of course. Um, but that article is great. I'm gonna link that down below so you guys can check that out because I thought that they did a really good job on their approach. Now, they did say that we ranked 10th in terms of primary education, meaning so kindergarten through um, uh, being a senior in high school, that we don't rank as well there. We rank number one in terms of our collegiate education. So if you're interested in higher education, Florida is the place to come get it. We've got some great schools here in Tampa Bay area. You've got the University of South Florida. We've got the U University of Tampa. You know, there's a lot of other opportunities in terms of colleges as well, but like those are just a few of the notables. And that was something that really surprised me, but I will say this, when you go through and you look at websites like greatschools.org, which I think is a good resource to go check out, you'll see some of the challenges that come with the public school systems. And I'll share my, my personal experience, guys. Um, just in my area alone, my specific neighborhood, the elementary school that is um, only two blocks away from me here is a 10 out of 10. That is awesome. The junior high is a six out of 10. It really falls off the cliff. And our high school is a four out of 10. So that is a challenge, right? It's like, how do you approach that as a parent? Now, the cool thing is Florida is school of choice and the greater Tampa Bay area gives you a lot of opportunity. We've got great charter schools and some incredible private schools that you can dig into. I've actually done an entire video on education here in the greater Tampa Bay area, so you can check that out. But like. That was fascinating to me, but it is something that people do find challenging, and I know it's a priority for families. We serve a lot of families moving here to the greater Tampa Bay area, and safety and education are always at the top of their list, which I can completely understand. I love the fact that we have school of choice. You obviously have to be diligent, do your homework, and, and get really focused on how to get your kids into the ideal school for you, but Florida's number one, even though people regret it. it's crazy. Now, the top regret on this list is one that I believe is 100% warranted, and that is the insurance cost here in the state of Florida. And whether it's auto insurance or whether it's homeowner's insurance, both are expensive and they have their own reasons. Most people believe that it's because of the weather. That is only one part of it. There is lawyers and litigation and all kinds of other reasons why homeowner's insurance specifically has been out of control. Good news is, We've made some changes in legislation. We are starting to see some things improve. Actually, statistically, numbers are starting to improve. That's awesome. But I'm here to tell you, it ain't enough. We are not close to where we need to be. And Florida definitely ranks at the top of the list in terms of insurance costs. And we are leading by a long shot. And that's not something I'm proud of, but it is something that puts a real pinch on people's budget. Now, I wanna make sure we get dialed in here because you hear a lot of noise. There are people running around telling you you can't get homeowner's insurance in the state of Florida. And that is not true at all. There are over 20 million people here. There are a lot of single family condos. There are a lot of residents and people have insurance. Are there people choosing not to insure their homes? Absolutely. Some of them out of necessity because they can't afford it and others are just making that choice. We have a lot of millionaires in this state who can replace a thing without paying an insurance premium to do it and they're willing to take the risk. People get to make their own decisions, but here's what I'll say. Insurance can be super expensive. Now the state homeowner's insurance average, according to bankrate.com is $6,366. Holy cow. Now I'll tell you that I don't pay anywhere near that. I've shared this multiple times on this channel. We live less than two miles to the Gulf of Mexico. I am right by the beach. It takes me seven minutes to get in my car and put my toes in the sand. My homeowner's insurance last year was $2,480. Some of you hear that and you're like, oh my God, that's outrageous. Others are hearing that and going, Juan, get me your insurance agent. And I'm here to say that that is not out of the ordinary, okay? Our clients are building new homes in areas like Wesley Chapel and Parish. I had a client that I spoke to two weeks ago who's building a brand new four bedroom home 
over 2,500 square feet and they're getting $1,100 homeowner's insurance on that property. Now, it is a non-flood, non-evacuation zone. It's a newer home with minimal risk. Am I quoting that to you? No, but that was their quote. They're gonna pay that on that home. That's awesome. But there are people who are paying well over that, depending on what area and the risk involved. If you have an older home, older roof, older windows, you are going to pay more money, especially if you're in a flood zone, especially if you're in a hurricane evacuation zone, and if you live right on the coast. So keep that in mind. As a matter of fact, I'd like to read some numbers to you guys, because when I was digging in this information, I wanted to know where the most expensive insurance rates were. Now, it, what it doesn't do is say what the average home price is. What does it cost to replace this? But here are some of the most expensive areas in Florida when it comes to homeowner's insurance. These numbers are staggering. Fort Lauderdale, the average annual premium for a $300,000 dwelling coverage is $11,368. Hollywood, Florida, $11,671. Miramar Beach, over $5,500. Pompano Beach, over $11,000. And West Palm Beach, over $10,000. Now, as you can see, those numbers sound outrageous. And again, we've got to do some more investigating. Are those homes in flood zones? Are they in evacuation zones? Are they right on the water? All of these things are important because just like I shared, you can get homeowner's insurance for $1,100 or you can get homeowner's insurance for over $11,000. That is going to be entirely dependent on where you choose and what type of property you purchase. So just keep that in mind. So even with all those regrets and people choosing to pack up and move back to wherever they came from, or maybe they're choosing in other states like the Carolinas, we understand that there are still more people choosing to move to Florida and the greater Tampa Bay area than leave. And we have brought in over 300,000 people in the last three years alone, and the area is continuing to grow. And the reason being is because we do have those white sandy beaches, the abundant sunshine, incredible weather all winter. And y'all, this is paradise. Paradise has its challenges just like everywhere else in the country. If those things don't scare you out of making the decision and you want to know more, please feel free to reach out to me and the team. All of my contact information is listed down below. Heck, there's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule the time that is most convenient for you. And as always, go out and live that Tampa life. Yeah.